Hi, everyone. My name is Chris Rizzio. I'm one of two assistant directors of admission here at the Hart School at the University of Hartford. I just want to say a quick welcome to everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our music education session. I think this is going to be a really great opportunity for you to learn more about the music ed program um, and specifically to ask questions and hear from several of our current students who uh, I just want to thank really quick for taking time out of their busy schedules to join us. Uh, should be a really great session. Um, feel, please feel free to put questions throughout into the Q&A and we'll be sure to answer them whether uh, we answer them uh, by speaking, or we might type a, a response to the to your question. We might save some of them till the end, but um, please don't hesitate to to put a question down in there. Um, so I think we're going to get started. I'm going to introduce Dr. Julie Hagen, uh, one of our great assistant professors of music education. Thank you, Chris, and welcome to everyone. We are delighted to be here chatting with you, and glad we can make this happen. As Chris said, I am joined with five of our current music education students. Uh, we have a first year student and then we have a few upperclassmen as well. So you'll get a variety of perspectives as our hope. Um, they are five of about 90 or so, I haven't done the latest numbers, but about 90 or so undergrad music education majors, I should say. And then we also have a handful of graduate students. And those graduate students are great because they often serve as graduate assistants and they enhance the learning for our undergraduates and it's it's just a great um, circular learning environment for all of us. So we're going to get going, getting into the music education program. I think one of the strengths that we do here at the Hart School is our school partnerships. And so many of you are probably familiar with having a student teacher in your classroom, whether it's in your music classroom or in another setting. But that's the kind of thing I'm talking about with school partnerships. But student teaching is almost always the very last piece in the puzzle in terms of school partnerships. It happens during your last semester or at least your last year, your senior year on campus before you graduate. Um, but we feel it's really important to get our students in those schools much earlier, mostly because that's one of the best ways that you as a music education student can determine how this feels for you. And is this a good fit for you? Is this something that you can see yourself doing? Most of the time the answer is yes, but in the rare cases that it's not, we want you to figure that out early so that we can help you figure out what is the best path for you. Um, we also encourage getting students early into the schools because it gives them the most variety of time in different classrooms within the music setting because our certification is a kindergarten through 12th grade certification. And so we want our students to spend time working with the little ones and with the not so little ones. And so we really want to take the opportunity over your four or five years here to make sure that you're getting that. One thing I'll say quickly about the four or five years that I mentioned, that's because our students have the option to do a music education major or a music education and performance major. And those students who are doing the double major, understandably, have some more coursework that they are required to do, and therefore they typically take five years. Some are able to do it in four and a half. So again, during all that time, we have you out in the schools at some point. So let me talk a little bit more about what that looks like. So the first thing we have you do happens in your very first year here on campus, and we call it the first year winternship. We have, as you may know, a long break between the end of our fall semester and the beginning of our spring semester. It's typically from the middle of December until really just after Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Typically, we, we start that week. So middle of December through late January. And what we ask you to do is to find a school at home. Some of, some of you, your home might be Connecticut, and you might be close by, but for many of our students, they are two or three or four or many, many states away. And so our goal is for you to identify a school back at home. It could even be one of the schools that you went to. And you find that school, you connect with a teacher. Of course, we are helping you in this process. You connect with a music teacher and together you agree to spend about two weeks in that teacher's classroom. Typically, this looks more like observation where you are really just watching what that teacher does, watching interactions with the students, this is also, I should say, coming after you've taken the Foundations and Music Education course, which Lauren, who's our first year student here, she's currently in that course right now that I am teaching. And so hopefully 
throughout that semester of foundations, you, you're looking at music teaching through a different mindset. You're taking all the skills that you have and all the knowledge that you have, and then we're adding to that. And we're having you think a little bit more deeply about what is happening in the classroom. And so when you're observing for those two weeks, you're thinking about it through that different mindset than perhaps you did when you graduated from your own school experience the previous May or June. Um, I say it's typically observation. My guess, and maybe some of our five students can chat about this in a few minutes, is that some of them may have done a little bit of teaching, depending on their comfort level and depending on the teacher with whom they were working. So maybe they were doing a warm up, maybe they were doing a small group lesson, maybe they were doing a one on one teaching thing. So that doesn't always happen, but I'm guessing it happens a little bit more often than not. So that's what happens during your first year. Then you have another one during your sophomore year. Same thing, also during winternship. Um, again, because we have that time for you to have those two weeks to do it. I should mention at this point that typically during the first year, we encourage our students to find a winternship at the elementary level, which all of you are certified to do. Whether you come in as a trumpet player, whether you come in as a soprano, you're all certified to teach all musics, K-12. And so we all want you having that elementary school experience. Sophomore year then, we typically have you go out and do something at the secondary level. So if you're a choral person, maybe you are looking for a middle school or high school choral placement. If you're a band student, this kind of thing. Um, and often it just, it's a variety of different teaching classes, which is the best thing that we can do. And again, this might be more observation, but at this point, you're going to be that much more comfortable and you're going to be more willing to step up. You've been doing some more things um, and you're that much older and more experienced. And so we do encourage you to just be your own advocate as much as you can and say, hey, I'm, I'm really comfortable taking that sectional. Can I, can I go work with the tenors? I'm really great doing that, you know? And then it just adds to your comfort level and your skill set, which brings us then to junior year, which, this is where things really get super involved. So junior year partnership, there are several. You will be taking all of you again, regardless of whether you are an instrumental or a voice uh, music education major, you'll be taking one to two semesters of a general music methods course in which you'll be spending time in the classroom every week. Those of you who are the vocal music educations will take both semesters of this. And so the first semester is typically geared toward younger students. And sometimes you're teaching three and four year olds. And then the second semester is geared toward upper elementary or even middle school. Um, and then you're also taking a, either a choral methods class or an instrumental music education cl methods class. And what that means is that you're really learning the specifics of that kind of teaching and we have a partnership to enhance that teaching as well. So I, for example, teach the choral method sequence and we are in one of the local high schools every week. That's our class time meets in the high school. Ryan just finished that last spring, did that with me last spring. Um, Samantha will do that with me this spring in some capacity. And so that's a really great experience because it, it gives you your own class. And this is all before you've even gone out student teaching. And so our instrumental music ed kids, so we've got, let's see, Justina and we've got Rob who are in the instrumental methods class this year. Uh, Rob is actually a senior because he is doing that double major. So, but he's taking that course. And then Justina is a junior taking that course now. Um, and they will be doing the same thing, going into some high school, a local high school and doing that same experience. And our orchestra kids do it as well. And so you're really getting uh, some terrific hands-on weekly experience all before you've even gone on student teaching. In addition to that, remember I said that junior year was pretty intense, but in a good way. Our instrumental students are doing what's called a band and string project, which is actually a nationwide movement, the band and string project. And they do that at the local magnet school that we have on our campus. Um, some of you may know this, for those who do not, we have a University of Hartford magnet school, which is part of the school system here in Connecticut. And it's literally right on our campus, which is great because our students can just walk over walk over and there are those students. The band and string project happens after school. So this is something that they're doing in partnership with the school, with our music education students and faculty, as well as with their parents. Um, and it's, again, additional opportunities to get those students out working in small group and sometimes one-on-one -on -one lessons. Our vocal music education students have a great internship with the Connecticut Children's Choir, which is through the Heart Community Division. And it's excellent because you're placed with one of our choral directors and you're working with them year long, every Tuesday night. 
Um, we switch you halfway through, so you're getting some experience working with some of the younger choirs, those training choirs, and then some experience working with some of the choirs at the secondary level, either middle school or high school. Finally, this all culminates with student teaching that happens in your senior year. I mentioned just a few moments ago that that may be in the fall of your senior year or the spring of your senior year. Um, and we're flexible with that. We know that there's a variety of reasons why students might want one or the other, but they're both equally valuable. Our student teachers do two placements in their student teaching, meaning that we take the semester and we split it in half. And it, those two placements look differently for each student. We really try and meet the needs of what the student wants. We have had some of our instrumental majors do seven weeks in orchestra and seven weeks teaching band. Um, many of our students choose to do seven weeks at the elementary level and seven weeks at the secondary level. Um, every so often we've had some students, Ryan, I think we've talked about this, perhaps doing some band and some choir stuff, depending on really, again, this is where it allows us to really meet the needs of our students. And again, meets that whole idea of a K-12 certification. That's one of the things we work on a little bit with you is that let's open the, open the idea of what it means to be a music educator in all of its forms, both instrumental, vocal, and different genres of music. And one of the ways we do that is through our coursework. So um, one of the things that attracted me as a faculty member to the Hart School, I, I taught at a school in Minnesota that I loved in many ways for seven years, and this was a big change for me. But one of the reasons that I took the risk to give up that comfort level and come here, which is not unlike what we're asking you to do when you give up the comfort level of leaving your home and deciding where your next step might be. One of the reasons I took that risk to come here is our coursework. Um, given what I do and given that I have three degrees in music education, I'm pretty well versed in the different curriculum that happens at the colleges who offer a music education degree. And I know it's gonna sound like I'm biased and I suppose I am, but I, this is also the truth. We have probably the most thorough coursework for our music education students. Again, I'll start by saying that we have music education coursework every year. That is, that is often not the case. Sometimes as a music education major, you're of course going to be taking coursework in music, your theory, your history, your, your training, of course, your lessons and your ensembles, but it might not be music education coursework sometimes until junior year. And again, going back to what I said early, we want you to know early on how this feels. And again, the vast majority of our students, it is the right fit for them, but they might come in thinking, I want to go and be exactly what my fantastic high school orchestra director was. I want to go and be that person. And then because we're able to work with them from the beginning of their coursework, they might realize that they love music and they had a great experience, but they really want to sit on the floor and help five-year-olds find a steady beat and match pitch because they understand how crucial and important that is for lifelong music making. And the sooner we can get them to really be thinking about that, the better. And we also encourage you to be flexible. So music education coursework every year. As I said, it's incredibly thorough. Those methods classes that I spoke about, this is truly the only program I know of that offers two full methods courses for, for both instrumental, for general music, and for choral music. So for my students, I have them an entire choral, an entire semester in choral methods before they even go out to Simsbury High School, which is where we did that partnership I spoke of earlier. Um, and so we are able to, to really develop that skill set and have these great deep conversations about what it means to teach music and how we teach it to the best way possible and take risks because we come so we become so close during that time that they're comfortable trying things and perhaps failing, but most of the time succeeding at a really high level. And then by the time they're out working with the students, they feel really comfortable and are willing to take those risks in a public school setting. And it's really, it's it really impressive to me. We have a full semester now of guitar that we have recently changed um, that, let's see, like Justina and Sam, you took that class. Oh, not Justina. Sam, you took that class because it's for our, our vocal music education majors. Took a class of just guitar with our guitar professor here at the Hart School, who's pretty fantastic. And so what a great opportunity for those students to add that to their skill sets. So thorough, progressive. The reason we fought for that is because guitar is becoming, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy that it hasn't been in the public schools as much as it now is. And I would like to see it being even more so in the public schools. So progressive in that manner too. Beyond our coursework, there's some really fantastic opportunities that I'm guessing some of these students will speak to you about. We have a fantastic acapella coalition on campus with Ryan and others, correct me if I'm wrong, five acapella choirs or are there now six? 
There are five, okay, five acapella choirs, um, all of which are student-led. There is a faculty advisor, but the students do all the work. And not always, but for many of them, it's the music education students who are the student conductors. And so again, an incredible opportunity for them to make decisions musically, to think musically, to teach musically, to do all the things that we want them to do. And to speak to a little bit of this, I thought, given that you're the prospective students, you might like to hear from someone who is brand new on campus. Um, she's a student in my foundations course, and I'm going to turn it over to Lauren Rockwell, who is currently, again, a first year vocal music education major, and let her tell you a little bit about what her life looks like now. Hi, I'm Lauren Rockwell. I'm, as um, Professor Hagen just said, I am a music education and vocal performance double major. Uh, my days usually start at about 7.30, 8 in the morning. I have a lot of morning classes. I'd say I have an average three or four classes throughout the day. I'm taking a lot of, I'm taking a theory class. I'm doing music education. I'm in my vocal lessons, which I have once a week. I have keyboard and acting and choir and ear training and all these sprinkled throughout the week. And I'd say my day starts with classes. I have about an hour of vocal practice a day. And then I'm usually in a couple more classes and then I have about an hour of piano practice a day uh, because that is very vital for music education. And then I try to just be working from nine in the morning until five at night, five, six usually. That's my work time. And then in the evenings, I get to have some dinner, have some fun with my friends, study a bit more. My roommate loves that I have a keyboard now because I get to play in my dorm all the time. Um, and that's, that's what pretty much every day of the week looks like for me. Excellent. Great, Lauren. Um, uh, I'll speak with you a little bit in the panel, but before I move on to that, were there any, is there anything that surprised you that is very different about what you expected it to be? Or was it as you thought it would be when you were looking at colleges and thinking about this? So I think at heart, it didn't, the coursework that I have doesn't really surprise me that much. I'm actually not in any gen eds this semester. Usually you would be. I have some credits from high school that are transferring over that I was in a gen ed and it wasn't quite for me. It was a lot of work and so we just filled it in. Um, but I think if I went to any other school, I would be surprised because a lot of the other programs I was looking at, there are a lot of gen eds, a lot of filler classes. Your first two years are either like all education or all music. And then you switch the next two years to either, you know, the other one of those two. And I would really not have enjoyed that. I really like how at heart you're immediately doing exactly what you want to be doing. And even though most, pretty much everyone in the music ed department that I know who's a freshman is also taking a gen ed, but like I said, it's just one gen ed. It's just an additive. You're really going deep into music immediately and going deep into education immediately. And I really enjoyed that. Great, thank you, Lauren. Thank you for sharing your thoughts and your time with us. Let's talk a little bit about what happens after you graduate. So you're here for four or five years, depending on your major, and then what happens, right? Hard for you a little bit to think about perhaps now um, as a, a, I'm guessing a junior or a senior in college, but it's something that probably your people at home are thinking about and, and I'm sure you're thinking about as well. So what happens after? Are you going to get a job? Uh, listen, let me tell you, I have three degrees in music education and my family is still asking me, are you still gonna get a job? I've always gotten a job, first of all. I don't know why they keep asking me that. You think they would have confidence in me at this point, but that's another conversation. So what will happen when you graduate? Job placement rate and some other ideas. So what I can tell you is that for our students who are looking to enter the teaching profession immediately upon graduation, they get a job. It really is that simple. I'm gonna enjoy that because things aren't typically that simple. Now. Do they get the exact job they wanted? Do they get their dream job? Are they making exactly what they thought they were going to make? Is it exactly where they want to be? Maybe, 
maybe not, right? We tell our students to be a little flexible. If you want to, you know, stay in Connecticut, maybe you broaden it to New England so that, you know, you can be employable and get a job that way. Um, if you really are dying to teach middle school choir and you get a job that's K-8, so you're teaching middle school choir for a good chunk of your day, but you're also teaching some of the elementary stuff, we tell them to be flexible in that way. But they get a job and then they're often very surprised that they end up loving what they do. And then as with most jobs, once you're in that job and you've got your, your foot in the door, then you can start to be more, more specific and you know your criteria can go up a little bit about exactly where you want to be and that's typical but for our students who are looking they get a job and many often many many times they love it and they stay in that job now what about the students who aren't looking to enter like what does that mean very often we have students who are looking to go to grad school sometimes for music education sometimes for performance sometimes for conducting sometimes for some other things um, but almost always connected to either music or education we strongly encourage our students to try and go out and teach first because many of our students still most of our students still want to teach in the long run and we try and tell them that they're going to they they will get more from their graduate degree if they go out and teach first it will be more meaningful that kind of thing but we know that for a variety of reasons that's not always the direct path there's you know there's nuances and every student has their own needs so for our students who are not looking for jobs, that's often where they're going. It's a choice. It's a choice for them not to be getting a job. It's a choice that they thought they really needed to take advantage of this specific graduate program, you know, or there were some other factors going on. But yes, 100% placement rate. And we have a lot of students who come back and do a summer's mass, summer master's program with us and um, take our student teachers eventually. And it just, it's again, it's a, becomes a really great relationship between our graduates and the school. So at this point, I wanted to turn it over to the student panel. You've already heard from Lauren a little bit. I'll have her talk a bit more too. Um, and I want to take a moment and I'm going to have them introduce themselves. I just put them on here uh, in alphabetical order. So let's just start with that. So Rob, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Okay, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Rob and I'm a senior music education and trumpet performance double. So I'm going to be here an extra year and uh, overall, in general, uh, my hard school experience is uh, has been fantastic. And that said, it hasn't been exactly what I expected it would be. And um, when you go into music in general, you should always just have an open mind um, because you never know what's going to come your way. The more you discover what you're capable of and um for like for example i came in thinking i was going to be a high school band director that's it trumpet player um you know but then when you take choir and you take all these method courses um i now um i i feel like i'm so grounded in so many different subjects because of how well my professors have prepared me um i would be thrilled to take a job being a choral director, being a general music teacher, a strings teacher, really any of those. And that really broadens your horizons um, for jobs too. So um, let's see. So I'm a senior. I'm currently in uh, elementary, the elementary vocal and instrumental methods courses. And uh, I'm taking improv for music ed. I'm taking uh, conducting young ensembles, as well as all of my other performance side courses. So I'm taking, uh, we have to take a brass rep class, um, and that's with uh, my trumpet professor, Professor Snedeker. And, um, you know, of course, your, your trumpet lesson and my studio classes. Um, so that's about where I am now. And uh, I, don't really have anything negative to say about my experience here. So any questions, feel free to reach out. Great, thank you, Rob. Justina. Hi, my name is Justina. I'm a junior music education and trombone performance major here at Heart. I love it here so much. Like I was looking into other schools and I didn't know, I was really torn myself. My senior year of high school, I was like, I don't know if I wanna do education or performance. Like, cause 
throughout high school, I was like, I want to be a performer. And then I was drum major my senior year of high school for my marching band. And I was like, oh, I kind of really like teaching. And I really like the program here with the double major with performance and education because I'm able to um, dip my toes kind of in both areas. Like my freshman year, I was in the same situation as Lauren where I had gen ed credits from high school. So I um, added first semester freshman year, Rob and I actually were in a chamber group together. And that was really cool to like just immerse myself in the school because Rob's a great above me. So I got to meet more people and I got to see what chamber music is really like. And that was like one really cool experience that I had out of so many that I've had so far. And I still have like two more years left. So thank you. Thank you, Justina. All right, Ryan. Hello everyone, I'm Ryan. I am a senior single major. Originally I had um, started my experience as a saxophone emphasis. Um, I worked with Carrie Kaufman for about three semesters and then I realized that I needed a, a change. Um, I, love, I love to play saxophone but I realized that, that I loved singing more. I found that all the, the extra um, stuff I was doing outside of class, so a cappella, um, choir, I realized that that's where I want to spend more of my time, so I switched my fourth semester, and now I'm in my final year. Um, I'm in the semester where I'm taking about uh, the lightest amount of classes I could, only because um, <laughs> all the other years are so packed, um, but I'm still loving it. Um, there's so many different experiences I wish I could tell you all about, um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to only tell you a couple. Um, the nice thing about a cappella for me was everything that I did in my internships or in my classes, I got to apply um, after school hours. Um, and it was such an amazing experience, very rewarding. Um, I, I wouldn't trade it for anything else. Uh, definitely the, happy, the happiest year I've had so far. Um, there was the time where we went to uh, TMEA, which is the largest uh, music ed convention in the nation um, and I I don't know if it is in the world but it might be uh, about 20,000 people go there every year um, and we've gone twice so far I was lucky enough to be able to put it together once um, and we went in February actually and we managed to actually fundraise the entire trip which is amazing it was about $11,000 to get 30 people there and we we got everything paid for, um, so that was a blessing. But my entire experience has been wonderful, and I, I can't wait to see what's going to happen after I graduate. Great. Thank you. Sam, why don't you go ahead? Oh, Sam, unmute. Unmute. <laughs> Bound to happen at one point. Better? Better. Beautiful. Wonderful. Hello, I'm Sam. I am a junior year music education major, um, vocal emphasis, and I'm another single major. I feel like I'm surrounded by double majors, but um, yeah, I, I'm taking all the junior year methods class, the doc, methods classes that Dr. Hagen was talking about, and I absolutely love it here. It's like, I didn't really have any preconceived notions of what college would be like before I came to college, but this is better than anything I could have imagined. I love working with the kids, the students. I love the friends I've made here, the music education department, like our whole major is so supportive. That's something I was really worried about when I was coming into college. Um, I was worried like, oh, I'm going to music school and that's scary because like musicians, like what if it gets competitive? But like, there's not really much competition between the music ed majors at least. Like we are all really supportive of each other. Like I, we thrive off of seeing our friends thrive too. And that's really cool. Um, I also love doing extracurricular stuff that isn't related to music ed, but like it all kind of is if you have like leadership roles in certain organizations. So that's super cool. I'm one of the co-presidents of um, U Hearts Drama Club on campus. Cause I know especially a lot of like people who are into 
vocal stuff in high school end up in musical theater and just theater in general. And I know I was really sad that I might not get an opportunity to be still part of theater when I came to college, but Drama Club has given me an avenue to pursue that. And it's been really fun. So if you have any questions about that kind of stuff or about what it is to be a vocal music education major, I'm here. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Okay, Lauren, you already shared a bit, but what else would you like to share with us? I could unmute myself, that would be great. Um, uh, I think just the only other thing I have to add is I've only been here, what, like a month and a half, somewhere around there. And it's already so clear to me how, kind of like how other people were saying before, how supportive this community here at Heart is. I've only been to a handful of NAPME meetings, which um, Justina is president of. And uh, that's just oh, meeting Sorry to interrupt, Lauren, I'm sorry. Can you explain for our people who might not know what NAFME is? Yes, it's the National Association of Future Music Educators. Did I get that right, Justina? National Association for Music Education. <laughs> cool, so. <laughs> Very close. <laughs> NAFME, we'll call it NAFME. Uh, I've only been to a handful of those meetings, but I can already tell just how supportive both the students in your class are and how supportive the students in the upper classes are. Everyone is so welcoming and so happy to see you and happy that you're here and happy that you're, you know, working towards what you want to do for the rest of your life and this awesome career and everyone is so supportive of that. And I really love that aspect of the community here that especially within the music ed division, that that is really present even in quarantine and COVID times, that's still very tangible. So I can't even imagine what it will be like when things are a bit more normal. <laughs> mm -hmm. It'd be great. Um, okay, so most of you talked about, we had a, uh, some questions I was going to ask you, but many of them have been answered. Um, can you talk specifically, and it doesn't have to be, you don't all have to answer, but what was your deciding factor to choose the Heart School? Ryan. So when I thought about going to college, I, um, I pulled up all the schools that I wanted to go to. And of course I went to 10 best music schools in America, <laughs> or 10 best music education programs in America. Um, and I had scrolled through everything and I had found this school. Um, I found Ithaca. I had found um, some other stuff, but most of, most of my choices, I wanted to be close to home. And um, within those schools, I went, and I, I went through everything on their website. I went through the course load, um, I checked to see how far it was away from home. I checked to see the area that I was in. I checked to see how much it would cost. And <laughs> I basically made a pros and cons list of everything uh, about each school. And I found that the things that stood out for me most about Heart was the way the courses were laid out. Um, I found with NYU, it was like, eh, we'll do some music, we'll do some education. And it was sort of all right. And I didn't think it was heavy enough. Um, because I, I'm an education lover, I like to go to school, <laughs> and, I, and I like participating in school, so I wanted to have as much knowledge as possible. And so when I looked at the difference between Ithaca and Hart, um, both of them are pretty immersed in the experience, but I found the one thing about Ithaca was it was too focused on specific, uh, specific interests, so like too much stuff focused on specifically piano or just guitar. Um, and the nice thing about this is it's more general. It's, it's a lot more broad, but it's still focused, which are two conflicting ideas. But um, once you're in the program, it, it makes sense um, to just separate it from into uh, instrumental and to voice. And there are some things that we, we do take together. So that would be like ear training and piano and some other methods, courses, and stuff. Um, the only time it really splits off is for some methods courses in which we would 
the instrumentalists would learn a little more instruments than the vocalists and the um, the junior level courses uh, with the internships uh, but so when I was looking at the schools I found like heart is the education I want to have thank you um, okay what um, can someone else talk about maybe what's a piece of advice you might offer students who are looking who are applying to and selecting colleges now sam um i would say above all else like you need to know yourself and how you are so if somewhat well because a lot of times people will try to tell you that when you're picking a college like you'll get on campus and you'll just know but sometimes you don't just know like, I didn't just know when I decided I wanted to go to Hart. Like, I knew Hart was a place I wanted to be, but it wasn't like some magical moment, like some people describe it. And also, it's a really good idea to get involved and put yourself out there. Like, no matter what school you end up at, no matter if you're a music ed major, if you're not even a music major, one of the most important things about going to a college is being part of a place where you belong. And you won't find that unless you try to put yourself out there a little bit. Okay. Justina. I also just want to add on that there's a lot of unknown, especially during this time, but during your freshman year, there will be a lot of unknown things. There's a lot of adaptation going on as well of like, oh my goodness, I have to feed myself and do my laundry and do my homework and hang out with friends and maintain my life. And it's a lot to adjust to but just like Sam said get involved ask for help when you need help every professor at heart has given me so much help and guidance no matter what aspect of my life that I need it whether it's music education like my trombone professor like literally anyone and if any of the per prospective students have questions literally reach out to anyone because I know at least here everyone is so attentive and wants to see you grow and wants to help you with everything that you want to do Mm hmm. Good. Um, let's end with this question before we turn it over to any questions that the prospective students might have. Um, what do you think is your most favorite thing about the University of Hartford and the Hart School? Ryan. Um, the wonderful thing about the Hart School itself is it's sort of like a conservatory, but the fact that it's within the university is is the greatest part about it. Um, Sometimes you can feel like you're in your own world when you're in a conservatory um, and you don't get the chance to meet anybody different. Um, but the great thing about the university is you get to meet people from way more diverse backgrounds. Um, and it's also, it's also nice for the musician side of us because it's like they'll listen to you sing or you play your instrument and it'll be like, wow, you're so amazing. But with some other people, it'll just be like, Oh yeah, we're just as good as each other. <laughs> so it's nice to have those those friends who don't know, um, but it's also good for the networking opportunity. So say, um, there have been times where I had to brand myself. Um, I can't be in charge of making posters, making Facebook events, um, talking to uh, professionals that I've never talked to before. That's what all my other friends are better at. And so I can ask them for help. So an art major could uh, take headshots for me or a business major could um, give me guidance on how to send a proper email like all this different stuff um, it's the networking part that that makes a lot of sense here great anybody else want to add something rob my favorite thing about the hard school is the people it is the people that make the place. And that was one of my big deciding factors um, is just, uh, you know, there's always going to be the line between you and your professors, right? They are your teachers and you are their students. But at the same time, they'll break down that barrier and just say, look, if you ever need to talk to me about anything, um, I, you know, I feel comfortable talking to my professors about anything um, that I need help with. And the same thing goes for my friends. Um, you know, being a double major, I get thrown into a, um, you know, some courses with the grade below me, which I'm in right now. And then when I first started out, I was with people in uh, my age group 
you know, so you get to know so many people and they all just want you to do well. And if you want others to do well, they will feel the same about you. And it's just a great community and uh, especially in the trumpet studio. And I think pretty much in every other studio too, there's little to no competition. We're all just like, man, your articulation is awesome. How can I work on that? What did you do to do that? Not, you know, oh, you know, your articulation's better. I have to be better than you. You know, there's there's no games like that. Um, so uh, definitely the community and the people is my favorite thing. Great. Thanks, Rob. Okay, so Chris, we might want to turn it over for some questions if there were any that popped up during the during our time. Or uh, if I do here. see um, one question. Jade is asking, is it possible to major in vocal performance and minor in music education? So we don't officially have a minor in music education. That's a hard thing to do because we, um, because of all the course, because of all the partnerships, the public school partnerships that we have. Um, it's just, a, it's, it's, I guess our question to you would be whenever I have a student who's wanting to minor in something, my question is always, what is your interest? You know, how can we help you meet that interest? Our music education students have a very specific goal and then and then that is for the vast majority of them to get certification and licensure to be out in the schools so as a minor it wouldn't lead to that so my question would be and we have discussed this and it's not you're not the first one to ask this we have discussed this as a faculty what might that look like um and i so i would say that the answer is is that right now there's nothing officially in place, but that is a part of a conversation happening where perhaps we could get you into some of our methods courses and things like that that might um, answer or, or at least get you meeting some of those interests that you have that my guess would be is the reason you want a minor in it. Kind of a convoluted answer. So right now, not an official minor, but there have been conversations about it and I think like what the students have mentioned, we really are trying to meet students' needs. So if there's a way that we can get you into some of those course and some of that coursework, we, we will do what we can. Great. Next question is from Jenny saying, can you talk about class size in the music school? So I can talk specifically about music education class size and then maybe a student, another student can answer the other courses. Our class sizes are, are quite small. Uh, I will say the class that Lauren is in right now is the foundations class. And that is all of the music education majors, both double majors and single majors at the same time. And right now we have 26 of them. And that's about as big as we want it to be. Uh, we, we are very careful in how many we accept because we understand we don't want to become a music education factory. You know, there are schools that put out 300 music education, you know, there are 300 music education students and there are, you know, 75 or so in every class. If we did that, we wouldn't be able to get, one of the things I love, as I'm interrupting myself, about teaching foundations this year and having that class is that it's all one cohort. It's all the music education students in the same class at the same time. And if it were any bigger than that, that wouldn't be possible. We'd have to go to two sections, you know, which wouldn't be the end of the world, but you would give up something by doing that. Um, as you move forward, like in my choral methods class right now, because I have, because of the double and the single majors, they don't take those at the same time. Like, like Rob, for example, is taking his instrumental music ed classes at the same time. Um, well, let's see, Justina, you're not in that class right now, right? Because you're a double major as well. Um, Rob and Justine, well, Rob as a senior is taking it, the juniors who are single majors will take it. So you, it kind of scatters out when students take it and lowers the class size by doing so. So in my choral methods class right now, I have eight students. Last year when Ryan was in it, we had 10. And that is pretty typical. How many are in your class right now, Rob, in the instrumental? There are eight of us. Oh, yes. So you start with 26 and then because it, um, it things change by the major you don't get all those students you never get all those students together again because even when they're all together in conducting it's they don't take at the same time depending on whether they're a single or a double major so class sizes are small it's very rare to except for foundations it's unusual to have a music ed class that's bigger than maybe 10 or 15. Okay, we have a question from Andrew. Are there special application requirements for music education students other than auditions? Nope. And 
that's an easy one. No, nope. that's your, you, you know, your audition and your, your, um, your typical, probably the common app that you're doing. Any other questions from any of our attendees? Okay, well, uh, looks like we're just about at that time. Um, yeah. What I will say is, if anyone has questions about the application process or auditions, this year we are planning on that process to be virtual um, with everything going on right now. And that information is all on our website. So I'm just going to put this in the chat as well as contact information for the Heart Admission Office. Um, if anyone wants to reach out with questions, feel free to give us a call or email. And thank you again to everybody for uh, participating in this. Yes, thank you to my five students who are here. We, they are representative of how amazing our students really are. And thank you to the admissions office for all of your work coordinating. And of course, thank you to all the students who attended. Um, don't hesitate to reach out a bit. There's my email. Um, you can also find it on the website, but we'd be happy to answer your questions should they pop up in the future. Thank you so much, everyone.